Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Savard. In the next hour, we'll relive a memorable season and show you how Mark McGuire became St. Louis's home run hero. We'll note his incredible accomplishments in a season that thrilled fans here in St. Louis and around the world. We'll show you every home run that Big Mac launched this season. We'll take a look back at a season that breathed new life into the national pastime. Everyone knows baseball's greatest fans are here in St. Louis. And we've witnessed our share of memorable moments here at the ballpark. September 1974, we watched Lou Brock break the single season stolen base record. On this very field, Whitey Herzog's Cardinals won the World Series title in 1982. And we've seen big home runs. Who can forget Ozzie's left-handed homer in the 85 playoff? Go crazy, folks! Go crazy! It's a home run. All great memories. And now we can add Mark McGuire's run on the most celebrated individual record in sports, Roger Maris' 61 home runs. Anticipation for the moment built early, and with good reason. Mark McGuire has always been a thrilling power hitter. In his very first at bat as a seven-year-old little leaguer, he hit a home run. A pitcher turned slugger, he shattered home run records in college. Struck gold with the 84 Olympic team. As a rookie with the Oakland A's, he hit a record 49 home runs. He was an all-star, a gold glover. He hit a game-winning home run in the 1988 World Series. The kid faced slugger was on top of the world. You, you know, USA Doe goes around doing that little thing with your pitcher, which is the most exciting moment in baseball you like to do. And I, I think I said uh, hit a home run in the World Series and win a ball game. And uh, it happened tonight, so this has to be the top. Has to be. In 1989, he was a World Series champion. And on July 31st, 1997, he became a Cardinal. On August 8th, he hit his first Cardinal home run. Later in September, the greatest slugger of the modern era turns his back on the free agent market and signs a three-year, $30 million deal to stay in St. Louis. Now I know what everybody's talking about uh, when they told me when I came over here to uh, this is what you're going to expect. A town that uh, supports baseball at its best. That's why it wasn't really hard after three or four weeks for me to fall in love with the team, the city. Mark McGuire would go on to hit 58 home runs in 1997, joining Babe Ruth as the only players in history to hit more than 50 home runs in back-to-back -back seasons. But it was only a taste of things to come. After a winter's worth of waiting, the Redbirds and their fans head south for spring training 1998. It's a new season and a new training facility in Jupiter, Florida. And for Mark McGuire, the first volley in what would soon grow to be a seemingly endless barrage of questions about the record. Nobody knows what the future holds. You just prepare yourself and see what happens. March 31st, the day diehard Cardinal fans have been longing for, the boys are back in town. Some are predicting this is the Cardinals' year to take the pennant. Maybe more. Everyone is expecting Mark McGuire to deliver. And he does. McGuire begins his pursuit of Roger Maris' record in Herculean fashion. Fifth inning, bases loaded, two out, goodbye. Swing and a high fly ball in the left. That ball carries to the track. Might leave the park. He did it. A grand slam! With one swing of the bat, Mark McGuire becomes the first Cardinal to hit a grand slam on opening day. And as if the opening day blast wasn't enough, the home runs just kept coming. Swing a long one! Good night! Here's the pitch. Swing it along with the left. Hooking and going. Fair for a home run! The pitch to Mark McGuire. Swing and a long one! Calling air traffic control! Calling air traffic control. Four home runs in the first four games. Big Mac ties Willie Mays' National League record, and St. Louis goes crazy. But after a long road trip, no more home runs. Mark McGuire and the Redbirds return home 
and Big Red picks up where he left off. That's why. See you later. McGuire trying to change that. That's well hit down the line and left. 2 0. In the center field. It's a three home run night for Big Mac. It would be the third three home run game of his career, and waiting to greet him each time he crossed the plate, a bat boy by the name of Matt McGuire. Breaking ball. Long fly. Three days later, number eight. Five of Mac's first eight home runs come when the Cardinals wrap up April on the road. Number nine comes against the Expos. Number 10 in Philly. Later at Wrigley, Mac goes 0 for 3 against Cubs pitching phenom Kerry Wood, but lights up a relief pitcher for number 11 to wrap up the first month of the season. And it is gone! St. Louis was stricken with a bad case of McGuire mania. It infected everyone, but hardest hit may have been the young fans. Jason Whiteley witnessed a scenario played out before every game here at Bush Stadium. The boys and girls dreaming of getting an autograph from their hero. You'd think kids are on a deadline here. The truth is, though, the gates have just opened. Excuse me, excuse me. And everyone is after a tangible piece of tonight. Mr. McGuire! The autographs I want was Mark McGuire, Red Langford, and Ryan Jordan. Kyle Joyner is 11. I only been for about five games, and I never got autographs. Mr. Um, Ryan there. Mormon is 11 also. I've been to five games, have five autographs. McGuire! McGuire! And both of them want Mark McGuire's autograph. If I get the autograph, then I'll be satisfied. I've been here ever wow. since the gates opened at 5'10". Let me Ooh. sit down on me. Smoking. That's out. Being a kid oh. may be harder than you remember. The hardest thing is probably trying to actually get someone's autograph. Trying to be able to actually say, can can yeah, getting over here saying that you can can you please sign my ball or my mitt or my glove or whatever. I was gonna get this signed and this depend this depend I was gonna let him sign them. Only if Kyle gets lucky, he'll take home a memory of McGuire. Well, if I don't get the autograph, I'll just keep on trying. Remember, though, he is competing against Ryan. Come on, McGuire! That's one. Thank you. It took two hours. I was surprised that I got that close. But he finally got what he came for. I got a um, paper that was signed by Mark McGuire, and I'm going to show my dad. And the man destined to become a baseball legend did not disappoint. By the end of the month, Mark McGuire had 32 RBIs, tying a National League record. And despite the growing spotlight of fans and the media, Max showed us that this was only the beginning. Nothing yet. When we come back, you'll see Big Mac's greatest hits in his quest to become St. Louis's home run hero. Mark McGuire, St. Louis home run hero, is sponsored tonight in part by Ford. See your local Ford dealer today. By the Sourdough Jack from Jack in the Box. Four million antenna balls can't be wrong. By Suzuki, makers of the all-new V6 Grand Patera. By Big Kmart, low prices all the time, lowest sale prices every time, guaranteed. And by Mitsubishi, wake up and drive. Band-Aid marks the spot where number 16 left its mark. If you've ever wondered how the Cardinals measure home runs, well, it's not with a tape measure, laser, or some sort of fancy computer program. They use this, a crude chart with certain sections and seats marked with approximate distances. And in the end, it all comes down to the chart, a sharp eye, and a good guess. But Big Mac isn't big on showing off his awards and records. It's not his style. In fact, he gives most of them away. He gave his 1990 Gold Glove Award to his optometrist. His 87 Rookie of the Year Award is in a storage facility with a lot of his other trophies. And when Mark McGuire re-signed in 97, 
we saw a new side of this gentle giant. Let's just say that children have a special heart, a special place in my heart. And I... 33 seconds passed before Mac could speak. A friend of his worked with abused and neglected children. He had met some of those little boys and girls scarred by the abuse. Mark couldn't stand by and do nothing. I will do everything in my power to, to start my foundation to help them out. Big Mac is a big softy. The movie Driving Miss Daisy makes him cry. And while he's a towering mass of a man, he has his physical frailties. He has 2,500 eyesight, a troublesome back, a chronic sinus condition, and he's terribly claustrophobic. A wimp? Hardly. He swings the 34-inch, 33-ounce piece of lumber as if it were a toothpick. The dedicated weightlifter steps in at 6 foot 5, 250 pounds. His biceps measure 20 inches, his forearms 17 and a half inches, and with jacks like that, you can do things like this. Okay, now, uh, we talked yesterday about uh, baseball's most powerful slugger, Mark McGuire, St. Louis Cardinals, who has got, I don't know, 26, 27 home runs so far, on his way to maybe breaking Babe Ruth's record. It's going to be a very exciting summer watching this powerful guy swing the bat. Now, Big Mac is getting big-time attention across the country. And here in St. Louis, his impact and every move, no matter how minor, gets major attention. You know, there's so much scrutiny from the media. And sooner or later, people are bound to say or do the wrong thing. But he's dodged that bullet so far. He's been wonderful with the things that he's said, the way he has embraced Sosa literally and figuratively, and the way he's treated the fans. It was that he was such a big story so early in the season. He says, wait a minute, I only have 10 home runs, I only have 13 home runs, I only have 25, or whatever the number was. He expected that kind of attention at 50, but not that kind of attention before 50. With the eyes of the baseball world focused squarely on Mark McGuire, everyone expected Big Mac to launch a home run every time he stepped to the plate. So how did McGuire deal with the pressure in his run for the record? Bob West sat down with Tom Lampkin and Pat Kelly, McGuire's closest friends on and off the field. Though you'd swear he's from another planet the way he hits a baseball, Mark McGuire's best friends say he couldn't be more down to earth. It's not like he's this, you know, superstar, he won't talk to anybody. I mean, he's about as friendly as he can get. He gets along with everybody on the club. I mean, he's a regular guy. I mean, he gets mystified by how people are, you know, chasing him and following him and want his autographs and, you know, chasing him down the street. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Catcher Tom Lampkin and second baseman Pat Kelly have been swept up in the mania surrounding their buddy. They say it's like hanging out with Elvis. <laughs> On the last road trip to Miami, they were driving together across town to a restaurant. And this car full of, like, dad was driving and three kids followed us all the way there. They had probably driven for 30-something minutes in the car, just <laughs> through some back roads and everything, trying to get to us. And, that was unbelievable. He can't even sit down and eat a meal or, you know, just talk with us or have a normal, you know, time out. And those autograph hounds rarely even notice who's sitting with McGuire. We get run over. We get run over and uh, trampled and pushed out of the way. And it's amazing. Marcus said all year, you know, as this thing's evolved, he hasn't changed at all. It's just how the people treat him that's changed and how people react to him. Do you agree with that totally? Has Mark changed at all? It compared to the start of the season, he, he's the same person and, and people I think people have a tough time understanding that they're like you know is he nervous is he is he relieved now and I might think he's a little bit all of that but he, he's the same guy now as he was as he was in, in the beginning of the season publicly we saw Moody McGuire at times during the season but his friends say that was more human nature and less a result of pressure from the record chase 
any baseball player gets cranky throughout the season. I mean, nobody's going to be a, a saint. While his friends defend him and praise him, they have no plans to worship him. After all, when next season rolls around, they've got to live with him. It's not like we're talking about he's dead or something, you know, like we're having a tribute to <laughs> him. May would prove to be a month of extremes. It would be his most productive month. Number 27 ties Mickey Mantle's record for 16 home runs in May. It also brought the moment when a hard swing on a soft grounder caused Mark to wince and St. Louis to hold its breath. June 1st, in his first at bat against San Diego, an awkward swing led to an infield grounder and a cautious run to first base. Plagued by a history of back problems, McGuire told trainers he felt a pull in his back and removed himself from the game. I've had a history of back problems, which is something I've had since 89, and I have to deal with for the rest of my life. And uh, I had an awkward swing, got out of the box, felt a twinge. I know my back like the back of my hand, and uh, I'm not going to push it. So um, it's a day-to-day -day thing. McGuire would be out of the lineup for three days. The team returned to St. Louis, and Mack returned to the lineup, and in his first at bat, blasted away any questions about his back 409 feet away to straightaway center field. I'm all right. Nobody's heard about me. Why you got to give me a fight? Can't you just let it be? I'm all right. I'm all right. Don't nobody heard about me. You got to give me a fight. Why don't you just let me be? The Paul Bunyan of batters is at the halfway point in his chase to catch Roger Maris. St. Louis fans cannot get enough of their home run hero. Margie Ellisor shows us the Cardinal front office is deluged daily with a tidal wave of mail, and it's all addressed to Mark McGuire. A lot of it is getting to him, some of it is not. I think it'd be unrealistic to think he's going to see all of it. Now is probably not the best time, as you can see, just by the sheer volume. Mark McGuire's autograph is probably the biggest autograph right now going. Woo! He's overwhelmed by the gifts he's receiving and doesn't know what to do with all of them. His appreciation for them is endless. It's, it's just a matter of, of being surprised that so many people want to bestow gifts upon him and not knowing exactly what to do with them. Hey, a photo. We're going to get him back in the mail if you've sent us return postage. Uh, it will come back unsigned. It will probably come back months down the road. We will do our best to get him back to you. Give us some time. Be patient. You wouldn't stop to make me feel better. To this point, Mark McGuire has had the home run spotlight all to himself. That's about to change. The race for Maris's record is about to get very interesting. Slamming Sammy Sosa is juicing up for June, and baseball will soon crown its new home run dynamic duo. Sixty-one homers, man, that art is tall. Sixty-one homers, sixty-one, that's all. The way the boys are swinging, the record's gonna fall. Back in St. Louis, that may be the place. When the city's jumping, Sammy's keeping pace. The way the cats are hitting would smile upon my face. We're going to crown the king of the swing. The record's going down the king of the swing. And he'll be rolling down the king of the swing. Roll out the carpet for the king. Play. Baseballs were blasting into the bleachers all over the National League. Thanks to the Bash Brothers of the 90s, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. 
Just as the race was heating up, the All-Star break proved to be a letdown. During the heavily anticipated and much hyped home run derby, McGuire came up short and failed to make the finals, while Sosa sat out with a sore shoulder. By this time, stadiums were opening early, crowds coming out hours before game time just to watch the pair take batting practice. It got so bad that McGuire threatened to stop taking BP altogether. Restrictions were placed on the media at home and on the road. Everyone wanted a piece of Big Mac, or as Doug Vaughn found out, anything having anything to do with Big Mac. I don't care if I ever get back They broke into spontaneous song at Famous Bar while waiting for the chance to plunk down big bucks for the latest Mark McGuire item. I wanted to get the um, T-shirt that had all the different balls on it for him. That way I had a leverage. <laughs> Local printers have been working around the clock to feed the demand in St. Louis and around the world. See uh, 150,000, 175,000 units uh, go out the door. McGuire postcard stamps, gold medallions, pictures and plaques all seem to be selling as soon as they can be printed up, mounted and packaged. It's a figure eight or 12,000 of them were done. So and they've been very popular as well. $30. Even before he hit number 62, sales of McGuire merchandise at Bush Stadium were brisk. But after that record-breaking night, it bordered on the ridiculous. Right through the end of the season on Sunday, the Cardinals had to limit access to the team's store. Have you ever seen anything quite like this before? Never. I'm a Cubs fan. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. McGuire has been cautious in the products he's endorsed. He did pose for a limited edition bat that sells for $229. A portion of that goes to the Cardinals Care Charity. McGuire mania has even encroached on the Beanie Baby market. A Big Mac bear wearing the number 25 comes with a steep price tag, but is attracting worldwide attention. People want McGuire stuff all over the country. My wife and I were out of the country that, uh, a couple months ago, and people were talking about his home runs in hotels where we were. I mean, everybody wants... I got a call about 10 minutes ago from England. Somebody wants Mark McGuire cards, so it's everywhere. Some fans have made their own mementos, including this tiara that reads 62 and beyond. You don't think you're taking it too far with the... No, no, no. 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 We're going to add more on. Add more on next year. Oh, really? How much have you spent on all your McGuire stuff? Oh, way too much. We're, we're doing wonders for the St. Louis economy. It's unlikely that any other individual has ever had this kind of an effect on the St. Louis economy or on the behavior of middle-aged shoppers. One of the hottest McGuire souvenirs isn't available in St. Louis. It's Mark's hat. Not this hat. This one. The Abbey hat he wears during press conferences. The Southern California restaurant is run by one of Mark's friends. Mac wears the hat, and that has sparked a run on the headgear. Now the sports bar can't keep the hats in stock. Orders from around the world just kept coming. And so did the home run. to catch Maris is shifting into high gear. It's early August and Big Mac has 41 games to hit 15 home runs. You don't want to go away because we're working our way toward that unforgettable night. Tonight, Big Mac reserves his place in history. Cards and Cubs at Wrigley, the friendly confines, packed to capacity. McGuire and Sosa tied at 47 in the fifth. Sosa goes on top with number 48. Three innings later, Mac responds. The game would go to extra innings, and in the 10th, Mac digs in and reclaims the lead. A 402-foot shot to straightaway center field. Number 49. Mark would leave Wrigley with new energy. I knew how important it was for him to be the first guy to hit 50 three seasons in a row. And even if he didn't get to 62, he was going to cherish that 50-50-50 a lot. 
he was concerned. This was the day after he had 48 and 49 in Chicago to pass Sosa, who'd led for about 58 minutes in this chase here. He was worried it would take a long time to get to 50 from 49 just because how much he wanted it. Well, when he did it the next day, that took a tremendous amount of pressure off him. The next day in New York, game one of a doubleheader, number 50, and Mark appeared to turn the corner. Pumping his fist as he routed first base, the record was in reach. I've been feeling good physically. And, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, it's a matter of getting pitches to hit. It's a matter of staying positive. Um, you know, it, it's a tough thing to do what everybody wants to be done. And that, and it might look easy, but it's not. In the nightcap, Mac cracks number 51. 10 to tie, 11 to break, Roger Maris's record. And as Jason Whiteley found out, the fans and media can't get enough. Victoire. Journalists are the real reason Mark McGuire is known around the world. We're here to record history. Everything, every home run he hits is historic. You don't realize how popular the first baseman is. Yeah. I'm Edwin Polk with the Miami Herald. Until you find out how far folks have come. I'd say the Cardinals and McGuire are in direct competition with the hurricane for the top story in Miami. But sure, it's great news down there. Everybody's it's all anybody talks about. They talk about it everywhere. I work for the Associated Press. My pictures go to every um, news organization around the world. My name is Kay, and I'm working for the uh, Yomiuri Shimbun, the Japanese newspaper. We're the world's largest news organization, so I'm taking pictures for five billion people to see tomorrow. Fastball outside. Here we go. Center field. Bam, bam, bam. That is one of 28 Mark McGuire home runs John Gapps has photographed this season. This is a lot harder than it looks. He, he's very fast to the strike zone. And uh, we miss about as many times as he does. But uh, nobody's paying me nine million bucks a year, so I don't feel as quite as bad as he probably feels. Hi, Dave. This is Joel KY TV. Hey, Ellie. Yeah, get uh, Brad for me. Right? Thanks. Got a window on SPS 624 14074 vertical. Even Everybody after the game is over. Here in St. Louis, it's Hurricane Mac, almost as powerful and even more predictable. McGuire's story isn't over. This is one of those stories that, while it is incredibly difficult to cover as far as the time, I mean, we have to keep shooting out stories and things like that, it's one of these stories that you will never forget, and you will always be proud to be able to brag that you were here when it happened. Unless you had seats in the stadium this season, you saw Mark McGuire make history through the eyes of the media. Afterwards, it will all be over, but the continued celebration here in St. Louis. Ellie? August was hot. Mac was hotter. Three Rivers Stadium. Mac skips batting practice. In his first at bat, he belts number 52 and breaks Babe Ruth's record for most homers in three consecutive seasons with 162. The next day, he again skips batting practice and smacks number 53. Back home at Bush against the Marlins, Mack rips the cover off the ball, a 509-foot shot, but he doesn't celebrate. The bullpen blows a ninth-inning lead, and the Cards lose the game. That weekend against the Braves, rookie umpire Sam Holbrook calls a third strike against McGuire, and Big Mack explodes. Holbrook throws McGuire, Tony La Russa, and pitching coach Dave Duncan out of the game. 47,000 angry fans throw trash on the field. Hey, I get upset like any normal American, <laughs> you know? And I was caught off guard, and, and I got upset, and I let some steam roll off, and maybe I had to do that. I was talking to Bobby Knight before the game. I don't know. The next day, seven hours after Sammy Sosa ties him at 54, Mac retakes the lead with his fifth 500-foot blast at Bush Stadium this season. Six to tie and seven for the record, and the Cardinals are on the road at Florida facing a pitching staff that McGuire has hammered all season long. Big Mac goes fishing for more records and gives the fans a show they've never seen before. I haven't seen headlines on news programs not on sports programs, but on news programs. They start the 6 o'clock news by saying, Sammy Sosa hit two home runs, or a wire still leads the chase. Communications have changed so much 
And the answer has to be no. I've never seen anything like it. I've never spent so much time writing about one player in my career and probably never will. But all the attention is creating problems for St. Louis's home run hero. Cardinal Chief of Security Joe Walsh was assigned to travel with Mark this summer. He spoke about that with our Ray Preston. 101 to 708. Meet Joe Walsh. Go ahead, Joe. How are we looking down here tonight? A former St. Louis homicide detective. Hey, kids, you got to be across the street, okay? All right, I'm the boss man, so you got to be across the street selling, all right? Okay. okay. He now works security. Joe Walsh is a throwback to the days of the cop on the beat, the guy who would walk the neighborhood making sure everything was okay. Only for Joe Walsh, his beat is Bush Stadium. How you guys doing? All right. Walsh oversees all of the security at Bush, but in the year of McGuire, he also had a special assignment. By mid-August, McGuire mania had reached such a peak that even on the road, McGuire was nearly mobbed wherever he went. It became almost physically impossible for him to move around because of the crowds of people that were gathering around him. So Walsh was assigned to be the buffer between McGuire and adoring fans. When you're six foot five and the Paul Bunyan of baseball, you don't walk into a restaurant and go unnoticed. A constant stream of fans would come up to him. Wanting to either shake hands or an autograph or get their picture taken, tell them stories about, oh, you're my favorite player, you're my mother's favorite player, or, you know. Somebody's got to be the bad guy and say no autographs, you know, we'll sign at the ballpark or whatever. Even though it's been life in the fishbowl for McGuire this season, Walsh says he doesn't feel sorry for him, but he wishes sometimes people would back away a bit so the man who created such delight and excitement for others could enjoy it himself. September 1st, Pro Players Stadium. The final week Roger Maris would hold the home run record. Mack goes on a two-day multi-homer streak. Two and all to McGuire. Sitting on 59 home runs. Here's the pitch. Swing and... There it goes. This is it. It is a home run. Wake up, Babe Ruth. There's company coming. It's Mark McGuire with number 60. And they're going berserk here at Bush Stadium. September 5th, 1998. Number 60 for McGuire. He couldn't have hit it higher. Home run number 60. Equaling Babe Ruth. A historic moment here at Bush Stadium. Here it comes to McGuire. Swing. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. McGuire's number 61. McGuire's flight 61. Headed for Planet Maris. Home run McGuire. 61. History. Bedlam. What a moment. Shaking hands with the third baseman of the Cubs. Pardon me while I stand up and applaud. In the celebration that followed, Mac wished his father a happy birthday and signaled to the Maris family that their father was in his heart. Mark McGuire had reached what many had considered an untouchable record, 61 home runs. I don't know if I'll ever be here again. So how can you let it go? I mean, it, it, it's, what I've done is, is, is fabulous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy it right now. I know that I'm one swing away. Mark McGuire had claimed his place alongside Roger Maris in the record books, but there was work to be done. Big Mac had 20 games to break the record. He would need only one. <laughs> Traxel winds and fires. Big Mac. Swing and a shot into the corner. It might make it. There it is. 62, folks. It just got over the left field wall in the corner. And we have a new home run champion. A new assault of SWAT. It's Mark McGuire. He touches them all. Unbelievable. He hugs Guy as he comes around. He's pointing to the crowd. He's saluting. 
the entire team at home plate. He gets a hug. He gets a hug from the catcher servant. He picks up his youngster. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'll just let you listen, folks. He's mobbed. He's mobbed at home plate. Here comes Sammy Sosa all the way from right field. And he gives Sammy a big hug and lifts him off the ground. Has baseball ever been like no, this? Jack, no. And it's because of those two guys right there. Baseball has never been like no this way. before. Look at him. High five. Another hug. Sammy Sosa. Unbelievable. Going over to the Maris family. Jumps into the seats. Jumps into the seats to, uh, to put hugs on the Maris kids. Today, when I, when I touched and held Roger's bat that he hit his 61st, and I just put it against my heart. This is the greatest thing I have ever seen. It's the greatest thing anybody has ever seen in baseball. He is the only one who can hit the ball where he hits it. He's the only person walking the face of the earth. The only one who can do what he does. This night is historical, and when I drove to the ballpark today, I honestly and truly wanted to hit it for the city. You guys have never made me feel more welcome coming here last year. I remember my first at bat, standing ovation, and I'll remember my last one. A few, a few years down the line. But I'll tell you what, the best fans in America, the best fans in baseball, thank you. Let's enjoy the night. If you think it was exciting watching from the stands or at home, imagine being in the broadcast booth for Mark's historic SWATs. The fantasy play-by-play -play booth here at the stadium gives fans a chance to snuggle up to the microphone. And for a couple of lucky souls, the chance to call some memorable home runs. Here's the pitch. Swing on one! And you can kiss it goodbye! This ball is out of here in a hurry! 61! Roger Maris! You are tied! Inside fastball, first pitch, and it was just absolutely crushed. He took out his nine iron, and he crushed it. I mean, look at this. Sammy Sosa is going nuts in right field at this point in time. Incredibly happy as Mark McGuire has done it. He breaks the record and picks up a classic car. But with Sosa hot on his trail, it's too early to crown McGuire the king of swing. The final days of the season are just ahead. Mark McGuire, St. Louis home run hero, has been sponsored tonight in part by Mitsubishi, Wake Up and Drive, by Big Kmart, low prices all the time, lowest sale prices every time, guaranteed, by Suzuki, makers of the all-new V6 Grand Viterra, by the Sourdough Jack from Jack in the Box, 4 million antenna balls can't be wrong, and by Ford, see your local Ford dealer today. The record was his, but the race was far from over. Mark McGuire hit number 63, but Sosa responded. And as Mack stepped in at Milwaukee, the race was a dead heat. Mack bruised Brewer pitchers for 64 and 65. And later that game, Mark returned to the plate and delivered a line drive to left center field that wound up in the waiting hands of a reaching fan. Second base umpire Bob Davidson called fan interference, forcing Mark to stop at second. The fan was taken away by stadium security. He lost the ball, was kicked down to the park, and charged with trespassing. It looked like the, the man that caught the ball, I mean, he never came over the yellow line. So I can understand if he came over the yellow line, but the replay shows that he didn't. But then again, it's a judgment call. I mean, he did his best by getting out there and, you know. Replay showed the ball may have been a home run. An appeal to the league office was denied. Number 66 would have to wait. For fans, the call would go down as one of the worst in Cardinal history, rivaled only by the moment St. Louis will never forgive or forget. Don Denkinger's call in the 85 World Series. I, I believe him when he says he didn't care if McGuire had 150 home runs. He's going to call what he saw. 
and, and there were some hands over the rail. Now, whether those hands were the ones that got the ball, that's the hard part to tell. They may not have been the same people. But, uh, and that's a very hard call to make. They've got a wall, they've got a chain link fence, and then they've got a rail with the yellow line. So, that's, Milwaukee should do something about that. That's not the first time that's happened there. I hope that umpire doesn't go down in infamy along with, infamy along with Don Dinkinger. He's the kind of a guy, though, who enjoys being in the middle of the stew pot. He enjoys being in the middle of it. He'll, he'll say to his dying days that he called it right when all of us know that he didn't. Mack was at 65, tied with Sammy Sosa with three games to go. Cardinal fans stared in disbelief as the stadium scoreboard revealed Sosa had hit number 66. Would Big Mac finish second? Just 45 minutes later, Mark McGuire put any doubts to rest. Number 66 was the first in a barrage of blasts that would leave a young Expo pitching staff shell-shocked. Big Mac belted number 69, his fourth home run in three days, but the big guy had one last at bat. Hitting 70, I just, I've never even thought about it, dreamt about it. Um, how ironic how when I got to 62 so early in September and everybody was saying, shoot for 70. And I come into the clubhouse when I got taken out of the game and they already had a hat made. When it was over, Mark McGuire finished the 1998 season with a remarkable 70 home runs. Sammy Sosa belted 66. It's one of the best things that's ever happened in sports, not only baseball. I mean, people who aren't even baseball fans are, are kind of glued to the sets or glued to the radio or can't wait to get the paper in the morning. Damaris is, while I'm sure they hated to see Roger's record go by the books, met McGuire on a couple other occasions and had a lot of respect for him. They, they don't mind at all that he is the record holder. We're going to be a better ball club next year. We were better this year than we were last. We'll be better next year, but no matter how good we are, can you imagine? Can you imagine being in postseason play with McGuire doing what he's doing next year? I think it'll happen again. I really do. Mark McGuire brought the fans back to baseball just four years after the strike of 94. He reminded us of everything that's good about the game. His successful run at Roger Maris' record makes him St. Louis's home run hero. Next year, Big Mac zeroes in on 500 career home runs. And maybe, just maybe, he'll make another run at the single season record. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Savard. Good night. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had that time of your life. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you have the time of your life.